Let's dive right in and take a look at the Dr. Octo Rex loop player. Here in your instrument sections, if we scroll down, we'll then find that near the bottom. Let's go ahead and drag that in. Reason will automatically make any connections for the audio in the back of the rack. I got there by hitting the tab key. Now with the Dr. Octo Rex, um, as far as working with patches and this is going to be similar to any other device. Uh, you've got your browse area here for browsing your patches. The name display for which uh, patch you have loaded. You can click on that and have access to any of the other um, patches that are contained within the folder you are in. This is the folder win, so what we saw were these other ones these loose patches that are not contained within in any of these other folders. So the uh, file formats that the Dr. Octo Rex works with is dot .rex, dot .rcy, and the dot .rx2. The rx2 is actually the newer version of the three, and this one can also support stereo fi files where the others can't. Um, the .drx file format is actually what the patches are, and this contains the front panel settings for the Dr. Octo, and as well as references to which individual Rex files are being used in that patch. It doesn't actually contain the slices, it just contains references to them. So we just saw here, you can click on the name display and load patches that are within the folder you currently have in the browser. You can also come over to the browser and just come into folders. Actually, I want, I'll go to the guitar loops here. And so if we expand out a bit. You can see that these are .drex files, so these contain the references for the individual slices that make up this patch, as well as any settings for the front panel of the Dr. Octo. And I'm actually, you, you can select this here, you can drag it over, you can also double click, or you can select one of the patches and click the load button. And as you can see here, the name changes and our slots then become populated with the different slices contained within that patch. Also know that if you are running the Dr. Octo, you can load uh, patches on the fly. So while it's playing, there may be a bit of a pause when you do it, but um, you can change patches while it's playing back or in run mode. Now in order to start playback of the uh, patches or slices um, or Rex files that you have loaded, you would just select whichever slot. There's eight different slots and these contain um, different Rex files. So just select the one that you want and you can click run. I'm going to turn the volume down here a bit. And you can, while it's in run mode, you can just select different ones. You can also hit the uh, space bar or press play on the transport panel. And that will start playback as well. If I press the space bar again, we stop. In order for the play button or space bar to work, you do need to be sure that Enable Loop Playback is uh, illuminated or lit here. So if I uh, deselect that box then and press the space bar, we just get, we get playback within reason, but not with Dr. Octo. So I'll just press space bar and stop that and turn that back on. And now we're back in business. So the loops will play back at whatever your song tempo is. So we're right now we're at 120 beats per minute. Uh, if I go ahead and play back, 
I'm going to hit the minus key on my keyboard. And you can see as the tempo drops here. The Dr. Octo follows along with it. And just a moment ago, I was changing uh, playback by clicking the different slots here. Just know that when you are choosing to a different slot, the change is going to be determined by whatever you have the trig next, next loop setting to be. So it's on bar by default, but you can also choose from beat or 16th notes. So let's listen to the difference with those here. I'm just going to F3 and get rid of the browser there. Um, so this is going to change on the bar. If I switch this to beat, we're changing by the beat. And then 16th note, Okay, so that's what those are for. And one other thing that I forgot to mention uh, when we were working with the browser and loading patches is that in the upper area here, this is where you load a patch. But if we expand the programmer down below, you can click the uh, browse folder here and load individual loops in. So if I click that then, you see we now have access to the loop files within the folder that we are working with. And so you can select there and let's run that back. You can um, also just select a different slot here and double click and you can see in the display here the name display that it changes with each um, loop that we load in okay so that's how you uh, load individual loops and just be sure that you select which slot that you want to load. These slots here will correspond, so if I select 7, if you choose down here, then up top will not follow. But when you are choosing from the top control panel, down below will follow along. And so let's go ahead and close our programmer window up uh, and finish up top here. As far as playing back your loops, you also have the option to use a MIDI keyboard. And I am going to bring up the on-screen keys by hitting F4, just so you can see exactly what's going on here. We are on C1 here. Um, this The on-screen piano keys enables you to use your computer keyboard to act as a MIDI controller. And wherever you are, the green area is what is active on your keyboard. So we're on C1, so the letter A on my keyboard is C1. If I hit Z on my keyboard and drop down to C0, D0 will actually play back your loop. You can also trigger each slot by using the keys E0 through B0, and D sharp 0 will stop the playback. So if I and if you take note here you'll see how the slots will change depending on which key I'm pressing. And then G
and then D sharp zero will stop playback. So I'm hitting E here, but that E just represents uh, D sharp zero on your MIDI controller. So I hope that makes sense. I'll go ahead and hit F4 and close out the on-screen piano keys. And also know that you can cut, copy, paste, and remove your loops. Uh, but in order to do so, you do need to open up the programmer. Uh, I'm not sure if that's purposeful by Propellheads or whether it's a bug, but if I right-click here, you see the options are grayed out. But if I open up the programmer and still click up top here, we do now have the option to copy our loops, cut them. Um, paste is not active because I haven't cut or copied anything. Uh, you can browse loops or you can remove a loop. So I'll just choose remove loop. And as you can see, we had slot one selected. And so that loop is now gone. I'll control Z and bring that back. And just as we played the uh, loops, using our MIDI keyboard, or in my case the on-screen piano keys. You can also play the individual slices contained within the loops as well. So I'll bring up the on-screen keys again by hitting F4, and in order to play these back, you do need to take note of which slot has the the lead lit. So uh, currently slot 1 will be active for playing back the slices but you can choose which slot will be available by just clicking and moving up or down on the notes to slot slot dial you can see that the lead will then change and show you which one is selected so let's let's choose four and let's just hear how that loop sounds Let's run that back real quick. Okay, and then I'll stop that. And in order to play back the individual slices, now you can see we have a visual representation of the slices contained within that loop. Um, now we are on C0 on the on-screen piano keys, so if I hit X we can then move up to C1 because C1 is where we can then begin to trigger those individual slices. So um, A is C1 and this goes on up so as we go up the keys we should trigger each slice. Okay, and this is going to vary, you know, how many keys will control the slices is going to vary depending on how many slices you're working with within a loop. So there aren't really that many in this loop, so, um, so that's how you control the slices. Just be sure that you are playing uh, C1 on your MIDI controller and above. And I think we're done with our on-screen keys for good in this uh, video here, so I'll close those out. And I'll close the programmer as well. Next, what do we have here? Um, we've covered a new enable loop playback. Below you have a mute button. And this is, if I hit F6 and F7 at the same time, we can see this is the track that corresponds to our Dr. Octo. If I mute this track, you can see that the mute LED is now illuminated. So that just gives you a visual indication, maybe if you're just working in the rack, you don't have the sequencer open, and you're not getting any audio back from the Dr. Octo, you can look here and see and, and know immediately that the track has been muted in the sequencer. So if I unmute that, then we're back to regular. We then, of course, uh, speaking in the way of audio, we have your master volume control here. And next to that, we have the global transpose. So the global transpose sets the global uh, transposition of the loops in every single slot, all of the one through eight slots. Uh, and it's, you can adjust it plus or minus 12 semitone uh, in 12 semi semitone steps. So if we go ahead and run that back,
and you can you can just control click to return that back to uh, zero and we also have on the main control panel the pitch and mod wheel here of course uh, you know I'm sure most of you are familiar with these these wheels so if I run this back we just bend the pitch with the pitch bend and you've got the mod wheel here which is going to affect or which will be influenced by some of your settings that you have in the programmer here and so we'll go into more detail on the mod wheel in part two and I think we'll just go ahead and wrap up here hope that you found something useful and I look forward to, to seeing you in part two of working with the Dr. Octo